Greetings, and this is your local wet hamster here, bringing you, well, we shall see. What's this? A Square Enix game? Oh no, can this be bad? Can this be good? Hexadrive? Okay, so Square Enix is the publisher. No, this is the third birthday. The, well, what people consider the third game in the series, but it's really a spin-off of the Parasite Eve series. It has little bearing to do with the actual series, other than they use the characters and whatnot. So, it has mixed feelings, mixed reviews, and, well, I will stay silent while you watch this little splash video, and I will talk more about the game as, well, as I get to the, the splash, splash screen. As you can hear, the, the music is very reminiscent of, well, actually, it's more like remixes of sorts of the first Parasite Eve game. While I have not played them, I have watched, well, I've watched Let's Plays of them, so I can actually recognize some of the music, but I, re well, that is why I would actually, that's why I would be looking for a co-host for voice commentating, preferably somebody who's played the... Parasite Eve series to death. Hopefully they can give me some insight rather than me just kind of not really knowing much about the series and meandering about. I hope you enjoyed that little uh, medley of cutscenes and gameplay that they put together in the start there. The, it is basically what we can expect to see throughout the playthrough. While The Third Birthday is a short game, I, I, I feel that it is short but sweet. As you can see here, I'm messing around. I'm going, hey, why are why can I choose between deadly and insane? I thought I was gonna start a new game, but apparently I found out throughout the game that it counts my my 100% uh, save, and it, various things will be unlocked, as you will see. Anyway, a cutscene is happening, and I shall uh, shut my trap. Tonight is Christmas Eve, and the snow should last until morning. The skies are presenting New York City with a white Christmas. The holiday season brings a change of scenery, as office workers are out of their suits and in festive outfits. With the latest... Mommy? Maryland's what is it, dear? Do you want to go home? Mm -hmm. There's been a fire on 52nd. Casualties are being set off. 10-4. What's your location?
hostile working to identify the creatures that are terrorizing the attack. Although we have no concrete evidence, the officer It looks like countless roofs are emerging from the ground. Here's the situation in Manhattan. Rescue teams are struggling to work with survivors, as roads are being destroyed and buildings are collapsing all around them. Residents are currently evacuated. What is this? The ocean! Watch closely. Knowing your enemy will make your job easier. I didn't say easy. I said easier. Sir, my mission? Rally with the National Guards and aid in the destruction of the Big Ore. Yes, sir. Now I know how a father feels in this kind of situation. No soldier has seen the heart of the Babel and come back to tell his tale. Well, you know the basics. Now, let's see how you do. I didn't know you had a daughter. For all you know, I don't. Okay, okay, got it. Back to work. Reprogramming codes, I can do. But you're the only one who can reprogram the past. Do it for all of us. Well, what do you say, Aya? She doesn't need any more pressure, is that understood? During an overdive, if your soul dies, you can't return to your body. Which means, technically you die. You need to stay on your toes, at all times. So, you're sending a rookie, huh? That's comforting. Everything we know is at stake here. Ever-expanding research budget, overall safety of the planet, every last thing. I can do it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the tutorial. Here they will be teaching me how to, well, you, the viewers who do not know already, how to move, access menus, and shoot, as well as a few other tricks. Well, I would just like to take this time here to state that I love the soundtrack for this game. It, it's very good. I, I really enjoy it. And I'm sure other Parasite E fans would probably enjoy more than I would, as they would be able to recognize more tunes and the various I, uh, like remastering and medleys and remixes the of past. the various Parasite E The overdive tunes. device sent your conscience there. The sacrifice incident from a year ago. It's the area where the Babel appeared. 
In case you're wondering, you're inside a National Guard, Aya. But your body is still inside the CTI building. We're going to get you started. Blank will navigate you. Don't forget that you're in a war zone. Every time they, they speak or there comes a cutscene, I will be doing my utmost best to stay silent and if I have voice comments it... The troops involved in the sacrifice what? incident were annihilated. It's been reported that they ran into some enormous twisted called Reapers. If I have a... I'll tell you one thing, they're gonna be a huge pain. <sighs> First, we need to get our hands on any information we can. The final goal is to destroy the Babel's core, the Big Orb. Rookie, here's a refresher. And here they will be showing me how to use uh, the weapons and switch between them. Anyway, if I have a extra voice commentator, which hopefully I will, um, I will be cutting out whatever conversation we have during cutscenes and while they're talking. I might do the dual audio commentary track thing, but I might not, depending on, well, and it all depends really on things. There will be plenty, there will be plenty of time to talk about things, as I will be doing an easy and a insane mode run as well alongside these. For now, we will just have a new game, brand new game, and starting on hard difficulty, as you've already seen. The there will no not be um, any insane or easy mode run of the tutorial because honestly the tutorial is just a boring slog of wait until text goes by and then the you twisted can... are approaching. Yes, thank you, Black. So much learning and training. Um, it, it's basically just standing and waiting until text flies by and then you can proceed and to the next section. So. Uh, it may be interesting the first time around, not so interesting the second time around. Now you... As a spin-off, this game, I, I think it does very well. It is a, in my opinion, a very good action title for the PSP. And, but story-wise, it could be better. As you'll see, you just heard a loud bang, and that means I've killed enough of these guys for the next section to open up. I shall stay silent for the next section, as there will be talking as soon as I leave through the entrance there. As we can see, I'm looking at the police van trying to read what the blurry text says, but... In, yeah. Time to use Overdive, Aya. You can jump into and take over someone else's body. Keep transferring from vessel to vessel to maintain an advantage during battle. As you saw there, I just gained a new weapon. Sometimes NPCs will have weapons. If I dive into them, there will be a little gun icon next to the name if I gain a new weapon type by diving. If I do dive into that person, I will have unlocked that weapon type and be able to purchase it. And here they are explaining how I can jump from target to target. This will be very, this will be key later on. At the easier difficulties, you can more or less ignore this, but you still use it every so often. Listen up, Aya. There are things for you to find out there. You can use them as shields. Overdive near those objects to avoid getting hit while fighting. Got it? And gentlemen, we have a cover mechanic. <laughs> uh, I hate cover mechanics. I really do. But, eh. Uh, anyway, they, they will now introduce a new enemy type here. Actually, I find them rather annoying. But, at least they're easy to kill. But, as I mentioned, this is the reason why you're the cover mechanic and the cover mechanic, but the overdive mechanic will be vital. You can exploit the enemy's AI. They will target the last person you were in for a while, usually if they're a ranged type enemy. Meaning, while they're firing at you, you cannot shoot at them, generally. And here I'm, I'm just showing off, really. 
This enemy's gone, and I'll do a little exploration here and there. I, I will be looking through each of the zones, looking at everything, taking my time through the main playthrough. You will not see that in the insane and easy run. I will be trying to get through them as soon as possible, because, well, I'm spending all my time looking around. It looks like the shopping district, maybe some sort of shopping mall, as you can see. Telephone poles. Uh, actually, actually, I think they did pretty well trying to, you know, make the sort of American-ish feel to the game, if you will. I can't tell I don't live in America, I, I actually live in Denmark, which which is another interesting point I'd like to bring up. Hyde Poor. That is the least... He, he's supposed to be from Denmark, but... He's the least danish person I've ever seen or heard, and that name... Actually, I might look up the name and see if it has any specific meaning. And... Presto. The next section is unlocked. I shall, um, stay silent and you will be, we will be learning a new technique here, which will, again, be our main staple of damage as the game progresses. This is an area where a lot of people lost their lives in battle. Look at all those twisted! I guess it's your turn, Craig. All right, rookie. You have no chance taking them head on. Overdive to the enemy's blind spots and kill them all. I would also like to point out when they mention that the barriers could break after getting hit enough, that's not entirely true. Some enemies, their attacks can't damage barriers. Though a good deal of enemies can break barriers, yes. But the flying wads, as they're called, wads? They cannot break the barriers, so as long as you're fighting them, you're perfectly safe. There will be a few other kind of enemy types, and I'll try to remember to mention which can break barriers and which can't. The first enemy type we saw that looked vaguely humanoid, the slacker, can. So if they start hitting on a barrier, it'll take a while for them to break it, but you want to take them out. But generally, they're the weakest enemy in the entire game, so that should be a problem. And here I'm going to fall. If enemies are giving you trouble, go ahead and use crossfire. It'll make all nearby soldiers focus on the target you want them to take out. Now, you'll notice that I'm actually... I, I normally don't use the revolver-type weapons very much, but well, that's because I don't like how little ammo they have, but they do great damage. It's time to retaliate. Now, this is what crossfire is. You wait for the bar to go up, and you psychically tell everybody to throw crossfire. And here I jumped the gun. I was not going to show off that, but that move is called the Overdive Kill. Enemies will stagger, and then you can press the triangle button, and you will deal a massive boost of damage to them. That's called Overdive Kill. As you can see, I'm exploiting the AI's... The AI is switching between targets that is not shooting at, so I can actually be able to damage it properly, as the NPCs will only occasionally fire enemies as they're not, well, the game has not designed the NPCs to be the main staple of damage unless you use crossfire. Here they will teach me about overdive kills in a moment. Use overdive kill. I'll allow it. But what about Aya's condition? Just do it. Overdive kill is a powerful attack that allows you to dive into an enemy and Enemy's implode it from zone. inside. Catch the enemy off guard and you'll do massive damage. And that is the gist of Overdive Kill. You implode an enemy from the inside, and this will be basically your main staple of damage for the entire game. Do not rely on power weapons. That's my only pro tip I can really give. Lower difficulties, power weapons are great. Higher difficulties, power weapons are going to be a pain to use. Now, I'm going to do very badly in this section. That is because I'm playing on hard from the very start with a level 1 character. <laughs> I'm used to playing this either on a harder difficulty with really good weapons, or because I just played tutorial, played a tutorial for fun. Um, or I played on normal, so uh, 
you're gonna see me almost fail this section, which I'm a little embarrassed about. But as you can see, massive amount of damage, and it, the stagger will basically stun the enemy for me, which is also the thing. So if they're firing at you, they'll stop firing at you. That's also the important thing to remember. I'm going in. Luckily, these these wads in this section just stay puffed up the entire time, so you can actually deal damage with them. While they're a uh, thin sliver like that, they, they're, they're really hard to hit, and they move really fast, so you, generally it's just a waste of damage. Now, later on I'll be showing off the various weapon types. Um, I'll be doing a brief explanation, like there's two kinds of handguns, revolvers, and normal handguns. And then there's like sort of different stats on different handguns, really. So it's it's really all about playstyle. Revolver deals awesome damage, but I just I'm, going in. I'm the spray and prey type person. I I hate weapons with low ammo type. So I virtually played through that most of the game without using the sniper or the grenade launcher, which I regretted never playing because. They are the best weapons in the game when you come down to it and you can use them properly. There will also be subtypes. Well, there's basically one kind of shotgun, but they have subtypes. Um, assault rifles, there's basically one type, but lots of subtypes. Same for the snipers. Actually, the snipers has the biggest difference in the variation between different types of snipers. But they're all just, they have the same sort of firing mechanic. I'll get to that at a later time, and there's also grenade launchers, as I mentioned previously. They do not really have subtypes, they just have a better version of it. We did it! The National Guards are regaining ground! There's also a special I'm section of the weapons. Troops. Keep going. A special section of weapons which are, are unlockable. We need to get her back. No, keep going. Changing the past might change the outcome of future battles. You got it, Aya? And I should not have spoken of it. Anyway, the special weapons I really don't like, and I'll talk about them later uh, as I go through them. I'll be making bonus videos showing off all the special weapons properly. And in fact, one of the weapon special weapons I do show off in the very first easy mode run and you will see why that weapon is horrible but for now I will keep it well sort of a secret until next week. I've split this video up into three videos as this video was taking pretty long and it would and I didn't mind doing the extra work so there will be three videos I don't intend to have the uh, well I'll explain as I get to it as you can see, I'm exploring, showing off the ladders. Ladders are highlighted with red, meaning you can climb them, so that's always handy to know. And here they will be showing me another mechanic. As soon as I clear out all the enemies, they will tell me and give me access to a new ability. I will spoil it now, and it is Liberation. That little red bar at the bottom, under my life bar, is the Liberation gauge. It's the sort of overdrive. And I have been... I've been holding off and using it until this point where they will tell me to use it. So... And this is where, where something familiar to the Parasite Eve series will show up. Um, not the Liberation mode as people know it, but, well, you'll see. There's only one more left. Focus on the target. Aya, use Liberation. Guess there's no other option. Liberation eradicates anything withholding your powers, while greatly improving your reflexes. But there's a huge risk involved. It drains your energy, so if you're attacked when it's over, you won't have the strength to... As you can, you can see, do this. As you can see, if you stay still doing nothing for long enough, your health regenerates. 
which is handy to give NPCs life. Their health regeneration is very slow compared to yours. And as you see, energy shot. Yes, you have energy shots in this game, but only when you're in liberation mode. What they meant before about that um, you're, you won't have the energy to survive or something like that. When, is our chance. when energy we haven't been able to change the past wow. using overdrive. Now is the time to show everyone that it's possible. What they meant by the you won't have the energy when the rage ends off with overdrive kill is you can't while it looks like you're invincible in the creation mode, you're not invincible. You will still take a small amount of damage each time you do What and as you can see, I have unlimited liberation for this round. Right here, in a specific section of the tutorial. But, um, if you have zero life and liberation ends, you'll be, every time liberation ends, you'll be stunned for a moment. And basically, they, the enemy can kill you all. Which is a downside to it, actually. But, the upside to it is, if you die, your NPC dies. You can always just switch from a, to another NPC. But you can save that NPC by using a liberation. You will be on zero hit points. And if you leave the NPC without regenerating at least one point of health, the NPC will die. This is an important thing to remember when you're playing on the hardest difficulty. Insane, or the Japanese version of it is Genocide. And it's easy to come to end here. Aya, go. Enjoy the cutscenes. I will um, bid you farewell until next video, which is just in a moment. Roger that. This battle we got is awesome. Good work, Gaia. 